the OpenDB Terminal Pro is a web app that you can use to do investment research. And I'm going to share with you the main structure. So on the left side, you've got the sidebar. And when you click on elements here, the working area, this entire area will change. So we've got the, the four menus here, and then we've got the dashboards here. I'm, I'm going to talk a bit briefly about each. So the home page is where you can see things like timelines for launches, roadmaps, upcoming events, documentation, challenges, and more. Uh, here is where you see the news, uh, what happened like recently. Uh, you can even search for uh, company news. Then you have charting, uh, which allows you to see uh, the historical price uh, of a ticker of interest. Then We've got data connectors, which allow you to bring any data sets that you may have, whether it is in the data warehouse or a database. Um, and then we've got the dashboards. And dashboards are basically a collection of widgets. Um, and you can uh, add widgets, remove widgets, but you can see them all here. And then the, uh, this is the folder. So a folder will contain dashboards and you, you can uh, put a dashboard into a folder. Um, and then here at the bottom, we have send feedback, which means that you can send feedback directly to the team or send an invite, which means that you are able to invite your colleagues. And on the top here, we've got uh, your account settings, we've got OpenVB Copilot, and we've got uh, an advanced search that you can utilize. This is the home page of the OpenVB Terminal Pro. And here is where we put information that we want to communicate with our users. So what you can see here right now, we've got a timeline, you've got the data roadmap, you've got the features roadmap, we've got upcoming events, including a button for you to join the event. We've got the Terminal Pro documentation and we will add more as we go. We'll have things like partnerships, we'll have things like uh, webinars, uh, announcements, anything that we want to communicate with you or uh, have you involved, this will be the page where it will be displayed. Another thing that we're going to have here is challenges. So challenges are basically a way for you to do something with the Terminal Pro so that you get to learn the tool while uh, successfully finishing the challenge. This is our news page. And here you can see anything and everything that is going on at the minute uh, on the, the media. Um, one, uh, one thing that you can do is explore what sectors or industries you are interested in. So let's say we want to go to markets and I want to see ETFs. I can click here and you'll see some headlines and you'll see here some uh, results associated with ETFs. If you're looking for something and you're not finding it straight away, you can also search for a category. So let's say IPOs, here I go. Here I am on the IPOs, I get an headline and then I get the here results for IPOs. So if I scroll down, um, let's click on this one. Let's say I'm interested on this news here about Starlink. So I can click on it and I can read the, the entire uh, article. But sometimes you don't want to spend the entire time reading the article. So we have the chat uh, with the widgets feature enabled by default. And that allows you to uh, ask questions to this article. In this case, I'm just going to click summarize this document so that it creates a, a summary of the document. Um, and this is perfect. It saves me a ton of time. On top of that, because this is related with Tesla, uh, you can over on top of the ticker here, or you'll see it on the top right. And there's two features associated with this. One of them is you can create a dashboard associated with Tesla. So I can click here and the dashboard will be created uh, on the background while I keep reading the article. Or you can click on the charting and that will take you to the charting page uh, for you to visualize the um, historical price of Tesla. So if I click here, what I'm going to see is the price of Tesla since 2016 or 17. You can change this, uh, which is great. And on top of this here, this is the last dashboard that was created. Here is a full um, equity template dashboard for Tesla. So you'll be able to see company profile, price information, revenue geography per business, and you've got multiple tabs, so ownership, you've got comparison analysis. And the interesting thing is that you'll be able to select which template you want to use to open these, uh, um, for this sticker. This is our charting page. You come to this page when you want to look into the historical price associated with a ticker, um, whether you want to compare the performance with another symbol 
or if you want to overlay financials to that historical data. Uh, as you can see here on the chart, I already have loaded uh, the SP500 and you can see here on top that I have a moving average with a window of nine. And the interesting thing here is that we leverage TradingView for, for these uh, uh, analysis. So you get the benefit from all the TradingView features here. So let's say um, I don't want this anymore. I can just click on it and cross it. And now I want to look for Apple Picker. So I click on Apple and you'll see that the Apple Picker gets loaded. Now, one thing that you can do, you can uh, zoom in or zoom out, but you can also leverage buttons here. So if I want to, for the last six months, I can click here. And then if instead of daily uh, candles, I want uh, weekly, I can click here and you'll see that the chart will be updated uh, respectively. Then let's say that I'm interested on adding indicators. It's as simple as clicking here. In this case, let's add a simple MACD. And when I add it, you'll see that it will appear right below and the zoom in, zoom out capabilities still work. But on top of this, one thing that we found interesting when talking with users was that they relied a lot on overlaying financial data to these prices. And so, and so what they did is basically, um, what we did is basically allowing you to click here on this financials top and adding revenue and other metrics that you are interested on in visualizing. So let's say I want to see revenue quarterly and I want to see it in a new section right below the chart. I will click on this one. But now let's say I want to look for net income and the net income I want quarterly too, but I don't want it in a new pane. I want it to be on the same section as the chart. So I've selected it and now I click add and here you go. So you can see that the net income is on the same chart level as the or ticker and you can see that the income uh, is right below, which is what we selected. Um, in case you want to uh, uh, change a bit the customize what you're seeing, uh, you can customize pretty much everything. So let's say you don't really like this color, you want a yellow, you can come here. Uh, let's say you want to add something, your text to it, you can add uh, any text here, any text. Um, you can even add emojis, which, are, which I find uh, really, uh, really nice. Um, and so the sky is the limit. Anything is possible on this page when it comes to sharding. This is our data connectors page. And when it comes to quants, this is one of the favorite features uh, of the OpenVV Terminal Pro. The reason being that we allow you to bring any type of data into the platform, whether you host it, whether it's a public endpoint, uh, we allow to do it. And we really want the Terminal Pro to be um, your financial dashboard, but allow you full control of whatever data you want to display in it and never be limited by what we offer you. So there's three main ways to bring data onto the Terminal Pro. So the first one is the single widget. This is the most simple way for you to add data. And when you click, you will see that uh, what uh, you will be request is the name of the widget, the description, a category, and then a URL. So as you can infer, basically that URL allows you to select uh, an endpoint that returns a JSON. And as long as that uh, endpoint as a, a course enabled, that data will be rendered in the Terminal Pro next to your dashboard of interest. And the cool part is that you can leverage all of the Terminal Pro features on top of it for, for free. Basically, you get the uh, AI shot with AI widgets, so you've got, you got the uh, raw data to shards, um, everything. However, you still are limited because the display of the data will always be in a table. And this is when you want to integrate your own backend. So even if you have a public endpoint, but you want to ma massage it a bit more, so you want the widget to be a plot by default, or you want it to be a pie chart, or you want to change the, the size that to which it appears, or let's go to the other uh, case on, on terms of integrate your own backend, which is like, you don't want a public endpoint, you want data that is private and maybe is in a CSV file or maybe is in your database or da data warehouse. This is where you want really to integrate your own backend. And so when you click here, what you'll be able to see is that we ask you for the name of the backend and then a URL. And this allows you to, to build anything that you want on, on that backend. And then we have native integrations. And native integrations is basically when um, we don't want you to have to um, 
connect with your database through your own backend by creating that client on Python or in another language. We want to make it like a native integrated solution with Snowflake, Elasticsearch or ClickHouse, MindsDB, any other, so that you can just log in directly and you have access to wherever data you have stored or accessible in, in those services, you have access to it on the Terminal Pro. But this is in development for the time being. Now let's talk about adding a single widget to the OpenRuby Terminal Pro. This is the simplest way that you have to bring data to the terminal. And it's very simple. You just need an endpoint that has a valid JSON and you need the course to be enabled so that we can have access to the data from the Terminal Pro. And although it will be rendered as a widget in terms of a table, you can still leverage all of the features that Terminal Pro allows you, such as creating a shot from raw data or shutting with the data in the widget directly. But let's go through a real example. So let's say I want to click here I, uh, to add a single widget and I've got, I need to give it a name, a description, a category, and then an endpoint. So let's go into the DeFi Lama API docs, the Swagger page, which I really like. So one of the uh, endpoints that they have is this historical chain TV. Yeah, and so that's what we're going to use as an example. And so what does this page looks lo look like? Um, here it is. It looks like this. So you'll have the date and you've got the TVL values. So I copy the link because this is going to be used here and I add it here. One thing that you can do is if it requires headers, you can add headers to that uh, URL. Furthermore, you can also add um, if the, 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 there's like a, a dictionary and is nested by one level, we allow you to provide the key to go deeper that one level. More than that, and you need to create your own backend. Um, let's say I want to call this one historical chain TVL, and I say, I'll, I'll say the same here from DeFi Llama. The category, I want crypto. I need to test it to make sure that the course is enabled and the, the, the JSON format is valid. And then it goes automatically to my widgets. And you can see here the OpenVB API widgets, but you can also see the historical chain TVL. That means that now I can click on new dashboard. I can look for it. I can look for historical chain TVL. I can add it. And here you'll be able to see all of the data that has been created. And you can leverage all of the features, uh, auto size, uh, all columns. Uh, in this case, they are small, so like this. And then I can even select these and I can create like a, sh a chart. Um, let's do a line and here you go. And you can, you can even do uh, more fun things like for instance, shot with uh, these. Uh, and ask questions to the data. And the, you can bring any data again, and it's the simplest way that you have to. Now I'm gonna show you how you can integrate your own backend with OpenV Terminal Pro. This is where you have full control of the data that comes to the OpenV Terminal Pro. And it can be a CSV file, a JSON file, it can um, be connected with a database, data warehouse, it can be anything, okay? So we basically provide you with the specs to add a widget that contains data to the Terminal Pro. And so when I click here on add your own backend, what you'll see is just a simple thing, the name of the backend that you are adding and the URL where I have access to that backend. And when you come into my widgets, that's actually one of the first things that you see is that there's an OpenV API. So basically the OpenVB API is the backend that our OpenVB team has already built for you. But, and, and you can see here all the widgets that you have accessible, but, but you can create your own backend. So the ideal use case is that you've got the OpenVB API backend that provides you with all this data, and you've got your firm's own API that has access to data that is proprietary to your firm and there is not accessible by other companies, basically your hedge. And so I want to go through an example of how you can actually do this. Um, and I'm gonna show you an example with our, uh, based on uh, one, uh, one of our GitHub examples. So if you click on this link, What's gonna happen? It is gonna take you to our uh, repo called uh, Backend for Terminal Pro. And these contains examples that you can use to bring data to the terminal. 
And so a few examples that we have is integration with Snowflake, ClickHow, Superbase, MindsDB, Elasticsearch, or even if you have like a, a, a file and you just want to, to uh, display it, or if you don't want to just display a table, but you want to display a, a plotly chart, this is also something that you can do here. And we'll keep on, on um, growing these, uh, uh, these base. And uh, even if uh, there are contributors, that would be great. This is all fully open source. Um, and so let's say I'm here now and I want to add an on backend. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to show you an example that uses uh, a fast API and Python to connect with Superbase, just because it's one of the latest ones that I've played with. So let's say um, I go into um, Superbase, um, I, I have my, my account and I have this backend terminal pro widget and it's called financial data and I added some random numbers uh, here. Then I can show you the code. So the code has mainly two main files. So one of them is the main uh, is for the Py Python client. So I use uh, uh, wherever uh, super base specifications are done. I, I initialize the fast API. I enable course so that it has access to the data. Um, and then basically one thing that you always need is this get widgets uh, method, uh, or in this case function. Um, and this get widgets JSON, what it does is retrieves this widgets.json file, which lives on the same folder. And this widgets.json file is basically the specs that the Terminal Pro understands in order to know what to, to show the user. And this one is very simple. It just has the grid date, it has the width and the height, it has the widget type, it has the description, but you, this can be really complex. So you can put what type of chart do you want? Uh, is there an index that we want to be pinned? Uh, the, the, the amount of things that you can do is very vast. In, in fact, you can actually go into this uh, repo and you can see that um, an example of how complex that widgets.json file can be, okay? but. For the sake of simplicity for this tutorial, I'm going to show you the, the simplest uh, version. So yeah, here it is. And then once you have this get widget, get widgets uh, uh, command, which you always need to have, you'll then create one command per each widget that you want. So for instance, here, this means that uh, at this uh, uh, router, at this financial data from Superbase, I will have access to this widget data. Um, and you can see that the data here, I connect with Superbase, I go to the table called financial data, I select everything and I execute. This is how Superbase do does it, but if, the, if it was data from another company and not the data, database, data warehouse, you could also do it here similarly. You just need to update the, the widget.json information and also the code slightly. And then I run it with this command. And so this means that now the, the fast API is running locally so if I follow this link, you'll see that uh, I have the um, Superbase backend for, for Terminal Pro. But now if I want to actually have access to the data, I can just copy this link uh, and uh, second, where did we go? Yeah, I can copy this link and I can add it here in the end. And you'll see that it has access to the data. And so, but now how can I or can I provide this data to the pro to be rendered nicely? So that's very easy. So I know that this is what I want. So I'm going to copy this endpoint here. And then I go to the terminal pro. I click here. I add it here. And I'll call it superbase. And I test. OK, successful. One widget found. And I add it. And now you can see that the super is here and you can even see the name of the widget in this case. So let's go. I want to create a new dashboard and I want to add it here. So I'm going to look for super base. Here we go. Financial data super base. And I click on it and you can see the ID and the value as I have just shown you. And the interesting thing that you can see is that this actually changes. So if I go into super base, and I want to insert a new row and this row, uh, this element is nine. And now I want uh, 420. I can save. The information gets saved and uh, I, I can go back to the pro. And uh, if I refresh the page, you can see that the information was updated. So this is great because now you have full control of the backend to power your terminal pro instance and your financial dashboard can be anything that you want.
I want to talk about widgets now. So widgets is the unit of uh, dashboards of OpenRuby Terminal Pro. So when you see a dashboard, what you basically have is simply a collection of widgets, okay? So it's really important that we understand well what is a widget and what does a widget contain. So I created this new dashboard and uh, I'm gonna add a teach at uh, widgets as we can go through what it has to offer together. So let's say I want to add an income statement. I click here and I add a widget. And here we have, okay, this is the, this is the widget. Um, a widget has multiple uh, forms, let's say. Uh, in this case, you are seeing a tabular data, but it could be a pie chart, it could be a graph, it could be um, like news articles, it can have like custom shapes and forms. Um, but this is the most primitive type of widget that you are seeing, which is the, just like raw data, okay? And now the most important thing on the widget is first, well, the data, but then the second is that upper tab. That upper tab has all the information that you'll need um, for a widget. And so we're gonna go through it together, okay? First of all, what do we have here? This is the grouping mechanism of OpenDB Terminal Pro, okay? And what this does this grouping mechanism does? This grouping mechanism allows widgets to be connected together, okay? And what does it mean to be connected together? It means that if you change the ticker in one of them, uh, the change will propagate to the others. And so this allows for you in the same dashboard to have different types of groupings. And so changing the ticker in one of the, the widgets for, for one of the groups, it will uh, replicate all the changes to all of the other uh, widgets. So in this case, let's say I'm gonna create a group. Uh, let's say this case is Apple. That means that now my widget is on the group, group number one, uh, which has the color blue. But I could change the color, I could change the, the uh, to another group, I could change the ticker. And it just starts getting interesting when you have more widgets, because then you can do interesting things where you can have a, a collection of widgets being belonging to a group and another collection to another. On the right side, what you have is the income statement title, uh, which is basically the title of the widget. So it allows you to know, you know, what data, type of data you are seeing, but also if you want to um, re-invoke this widget, you know what uh, name to look for. And then here is the ticker. The ticker is what connects effectively the widgets together when they are become to uh, belong to the same group. And then you've got parameters. So this is usually optional. It depends on the type of data that the user uh, is seeing. But by clicking on a, a parameter, you basically usually uh, change the type of data that you are visualizing. Okay. This is a, a brief overview here. And so what else do we have? Then we have all this side. And this side is really important uh, because this is where the settings belong. So on the right side, you basically have uh, closing the, the widget, basically means removing it from the dashboard. And then you have this full settings menu, okay? And I want to start on this one here. What does this do? This allows you to uh, two things. The most important one is it tells you where the data comes from. So in this case, you can see that the data source is in Trinium. And that's really important for us because we want to be data agnostic. Uh, that's like our long-term vision where we allow users to select where the data comes from. And so we empower data vendors to connect to OpenV Terminal Pro because we, we are not on the data game, uh, if that makes sense. Um, the second thing is that it allows you to see what columns uh, we are visualizing here. And if you don't want one, for instance, I don't want 2023, I can just click here and you can see, you saw that it got removed from that, which is what I was looking for, okay? Um, and then and basically on, on a segment of that, actually, you saw that I hit one column there, but another way to hit columns is actually directly from here. So I could say, I want to hide this column too. And now, you know, it's hidden. Um, I can, another thing I can do is I can uh, resize, uh, re reorganize them so I can reorganize as them one and I can even change their width. Okay. But now like I made a bit, a bit of a mess, right? So how do I go back? Very simple you have these two options. So one of them is auto size columns, which means that all of them will be um, like reorganized uh, in terms of the, the width to be optimal for the for the user. And the other one is reset columns. So these resets the, to the first view, including uh, really adding um, columns that were previously hidden, which is, which is great when you play around too much and you just want to go back to the default. Uh, and then another option that you may be curious, okay, what is this transpose data? That's really powerful. This basically allows you to visualize the data 
transposed. <laughs> so uh, in this case, instead of seeing the revenue and uh, you know general administration, everything on the left uh, as the index, you'll see it at the top. And what you see on the left now is the date, which used to be at the top. So this is powerful. And now I can, for instance, sort. Let me sort this data. I can double click here and I can click on this icon, which is uh, um, for charting and I can do a line. And so now this is great. I can see the, the revenue over time for Apple. So I don't even need to, to bring up Excel because I have this data right here. And I can even export that image, which is great. Um, and I can do more. I can, because I have access to the data that is in this table as a standalone, I can actually add data to this graph. So I could add a gross profit to this uh, uh, view. And I could change all of the format, the legend, the, sh the chart, the title. Um, I could even ch change the type of graphic. It's, it's great. And this is super powerful. Um, another thing, since we are talking about uh, things that are really powerful for users, is shutting with a widget. So in this case, I don't want to really have to look for the data that uh, I'm looking for. And so let's say that... Um, I want to know what is the latest revenue reported by Apple. I just ask what is the latest revenue reported by Apple. In this case, we know that it's right here, but it just proves uh, my point that, you know, it's probably faster to just ask a question sometimes when the, the, there's too much data or, you know, if it requires calculations, uh, this can be extremely handy. You can clear shaft or now, or I can just close the pop-up which is which is perfect let's transpose back to where we were uh, to visualize everything as default and we've got a, a couple more options here so some of them are copy to which allows you to copy this exact same widget to uh, uh, the different dashboard on the side or even creating a new dashboard with it um, you can export it in, as a csv as an excel or as a png you can duplicate it duplicate it is great because it allows you to look into the same uh, data for a different company. So if I want to compare Apple's revenue with Microsoft, that's super easy because now I can look into the uh, Microsoft revenue right here and uh, the revenue of uh, uh, um, Apple right here. Plus, because you can, this is fully customizable and you can drag and drop, you can even uh, resize uh, these objects um, as, as you wish. So let's say I could resize this to be uh, a bit smaller like this and I could resize this one just similarly to be a bit smaller and then I can drag and drop it and I can drag them on the side of each other this is not the best but you get the point next to each other so it allows me to compare um, like straight uh, uh, next to each other which is nice but uh, but now the thing is let's say i just have two widgets here right um but you can start having a lot and sometimes you're just really focused on the data from one widget so and and you have like 10 right next to you right it is a bit much right so one thing that we allow you to do on the settings is we allow you to maximize the data for a single widget um, and that basically means that we will make um all of the um, background to be blurry and we will maximize the widget so that you can just focus on on checking the information that you want to see from it so right now i could just look into this looking into what i was interested uh, uh, in i could even export it directly if i wanted that information uh, into like a csv or an excel or whatever um, and then once i'm done i'm done i can close it and i can um, go back to my you know high level view of uh, how things are going and then uh, um, I think I showed everything here. Then, then the final one is uh, this uh, um, icon here, which basically tells you the last time the data was updated. So in this case, it was two minutes ago, but if you wanted to uh, have the, the latest data for both of these widgets, all you needed to do is to refresh. That's it. You refresh the page and now you'll see that they will get loaded and uh, the data will be uh, updated, have been updated a few seconds ago. And yeah, here's a brief overview of how widgets work in OpenV Terminal Pro. So in this dashboard, you can see uh, two widgets. You see the insider trading and you see the earnings transcript. 
And one thing that we allow you, because I mean, look at the size of these documents. You probably don't want to read all of them associated with all the tickers that you are interested in doing research. So we've got this chat with document feature, which leverages the AI to interact with uh, whatever data it contains in the widget. In this case, it's text. So in this case, I can just click on summarize document and you'll see that you'll get a, a full summary of uh, um, the document, right? And you can even ask like, how does this impact my investment in Tesla? Or you can ask, um, you know, what, what should I be concerned? What should I be looking for? Uh, you can interact with it so it will know what you have asked before. So it's, it's really powerful. But Earnings Source Script is just like a very good example of this feature, but this feature should be available in most of the widgets. So above we've got Insider Trading and you can even ask uh, things like uh, uh, who sold the most shares in 2023, explain reasoning. And so here you'll see that he even does calculations to understand who sold the most uh, uh, shares. So he goes into securities transacted as expected. Um, and then from the provided data, exactly. And Wang Jin Soon, which is the CEO, sold 11,856. Uh, and uh, yeah, sold 6,000. And yeah, you can see that in this case, like he will sum up the shares that have been sold, which is uh, really, really nice because it saves you a lot of time as an analyst. This is an example of Tableau data. And so I'm going to share with you what you can do with it. So first of all, you can change the size of the columns. Um, you can move them from around. So I can put 2023 here. So now 23 is a bit far from index. And let's say I do like this, I lose the index. One thing you can do is you can pin this column. And so that means that now that it's pinned, whenever I do this, um, it will remain in place and uh, all the others will move. Let's say you don't want to see 2022 anymore. You can hide it. So uh, you can hide it by simply clicking hide column here. I can also expand, uh, move it in this case, and then I can expand here and let's say that I don't like this anymore I can uh, select auto size all columns and the size goes back to normal uh, but now 2023 is here I don't have 2022 one thing that you can do is to reset columns so these will go back from scratch um, which is uh, very very nice and then finally you can also uh, sort uh, based on value, so if you want to sort. But it doesn't really make much sense to sort because we are looking at different metrics in this case. So I'm going to leave as is. However, one thing that you can do uh, is come here on the top and transpose the data. And so now that the data is transposed, now it makes more sense to be able to sort it. So let's say we want to sort the revenue from uh, the, big, the biggest to the, the smallest. Um, in this case, sorry, the smallest to the biggest. And you can see that 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Here is interesting because the 15 should have come here. So that this means that for Apple had a bigger revenue in 2015 than in 16 and 17, which is very interesting. And so this is why it's very nice that you can transpose and then leverage the sorting uh, capabilities. If you were an analyst and you wanted to create a, a chart of the revenue over time, what would you have to do? Basically, you'd have to export the data, import it into an Excel and then leverage Excel. We thought that this can be done better by allowing you to do this from the Terminal Pro directly. And is as simple as double clicking the revenue, which is what I'm interested in, and clicking on chart. And then in this case, I want to see a line and that's it. And let's say that now you want to see the net income as well. This is as simple as going into the settings uh, on the data side, looking here for net income. Uh, here we go and clicking on it and here we go. Now it's visible. And then you can add revenue if you want. You can, you can even change the type of charts that you are displaying. So if you click here, 
you see the chart is different you can uh, plot one versus the other so on the x you have net income and then on the uh, y the, the uh, revenue um, and yeah basically there's so many options that you can do another thing is this is just a line chart but you can actually do a, a bar stack so if i select this block i can right click and i can click chart and then i go into column and then i want grouped for instance and you'll see the the revenue over time but also the cost of revenue and gross profit so the possibilities are immense and then of course you are able to uh, export the data into a png uh, you can select uh, wherever the title is that you want and uh, you will be safe or just click here on this button Now let's talk about dashboards uh, in the OpenBit Terminal Pro. So dashboards is this section that you can see here on the side and it's a collection of widgets uh, in a simple way. Okay, and so what I want to do is I created a new dashboard um, and I click here and basically I there's multiple things I can do. So I can add the widgets individually that I'm interested in, but what I'm going to do is actually go into uh, the tem templates library. And in this case, I'm going to use the analyst template that is here by default. In the future, we will allow users to create their own uh, templates, but for now, um, there's a, a only analyst template available. Um, and the cool thing here is that basically once you click on it, it opens up with this configuration that we've already optimized for uh, um, increasing the user experience. For in this case, we call it analyst template because uh, this was built um, thinking about analysts and with a lot of iteration, right? And so you see things like global news, uh, major indices, which are, you can configurize here, uh, customize there. Um, you can add a uh, watch list of tickers, uh, analyst estimates, uh, price targets, valuations, um, and a few things that, you know, we thought that uh, would be helpful. And as I mentioned before, uh, widgets uh, can have groupings. And in, this is what you're seeing here. When you click here, this group is connected with this one, which is connected with, the, with this one. And that's why they all have this one, uh, because they are grouped together, okay? And so that means that if I am to change these into Microsoft, what's gonna happen is that they all are going to change to Microsoft. And this is also reflected here on the side of the dashboard. And this allows you to know which dashboard uh, is looking to which sticker directly. And so this is, this is great, right? Um, and this is even better. And why is it better? Because we, uh, because you have the watch list widget in this is a special one. We allow you to control the grouping uh, by clicking on the, whatever is on the watch list. So if I click on Nvidia here, you'll see that all of the widgets now will be pointing towards Nvidia which is like great, it's a great user experience. And now let's say that I want to add a new widget. I want to add a new widget and I come here and I'm going to add, uh, I don't know, let's do uh, share statistics, that's perfect. I'm going to add it. There it goes. So by default, it's added on the same group because uh, the entire page is full of that group. So we assume that the user wants another one of that. But let's say that's not the case. In this case, I want to have a new group. So I create this new group. It automatically gets put there. And now this is NVIDIA. And now this means that if I change these stickers, this one won't change. But if I am to change now this company news into NVIDIA, that means that these are connected. And now, once I change these into, let's do, uh, we can do new, new, why not? You'll see that the data uh, gets updated for new for both of these, uh, which is super powerful and it can be visible here on the side. So that is great. So in this case, let's say I actually don't want these two. I want to get rid of them and this one too. But this view is actually quite nice. It shows me most of what I wanted to see. Uh, perhaps I don't want global news. I also don't want major indices. Uh, but this is already great for what I for my analysis. So one thing I can do, uh, I can add this special uh, this special uh, widget, uh, which is the text widget, and I can bring it here on the side. And I can add some notes. Uh, this is pretty much kind of markdown. So you can add notes, you can drag and drop images. Uh, this is great. Uh, you can write everything you want. And why am I doing this? Because now what this allows me to do is I can export this entire dashboard into a report. 
So I can export report and I can name it after anything I want. I can select the format and then I just wait. And then what's what's happening is that this is downloading a PDF file of what I'm visualizing right to the user. Okay. Um, and so this shows you more or less what you can expect from a dashboard. But there's a few more things that uh, is important for you to understand. So one of them is, okay, let's say that you have, uh, oh, here we, here we have the PDF that was just uh, downloaded. Uh, so I can click on it and you can see that, you know, the rendering is actually uh, really, really good. Um, but you can understand with a big organization, this dashboards menu can become quite complex. And how does it work with uh, authorization? So we are working on, the, on that type of features right now, where basically you will be able to create folders, which you are already capable of, and give, and let's say folder, uh, I don't know, DDF folder, and give permissions to folders based on the type of users that are utilizing your app. So then I can just drag and drop, and here we go. This analyst template folder, uh, dashboard now is within the folder which is great but this analyst template was was great but like where was the f financials where's the you know institutional like holdings there's a couple of things missing and why is that is because the analyst template was done on purpose to be like a brief overview and uh we even including a watch list but one other thing that you can do is let's create a new dashboard here on the side i'm gonna create a new dashboard and right now I don't want to go for a template. I want to select security directly. And what happens is when I select the security in, uh, directly, a template is being preloaded with it directly. And that template is not the analyst template, it's the equity template that we we defined. And all of these, we will allow the user to control. Uh, but this is really powerful now because I can click on uh, Google. And what you see is uh, a complete different dashboard full of widgets uh, for Google. Um, okay, so in this case, you can see here the chart, you can see a company profile, company news, key metrics, share statistics, and more importantly, you can see this nav bar on top. And this nav bar means that there's within the dashboard information from uh, tabs that have more information. So right now, this is the overview, but I can click on financials and this will take me for the financial stuff. And again, all of this is, is pointing to Google and you can see here the grouping on the side that is uh, all the widgets are connected together. And then you have technical analysis and uh, um, you've got a few a few others that uh, are available uh, here. Um, so this shows how powerful dashboards can be. Uh, and ideally in the future, we, you, will, you will be allowed to share these dashboards with your uh, co-workers you'll be able to add new tabs to the nav tab you can add widgets you can remove widgets you can reorganize you can save templates so yeah it's important that you understand well how dashboards work because this is the basis to be really powerful when doing things um, and you know there are more features that allow you to create dashboards quickly uh, for instance if i'm overing in these um, i could uh, or let's say I'm already open on Google. If I'm hovering on Apple, for instance, I could create a dashboard directly. And so I just click here and this will create a dashboard directly uh, with the equity template preloaded uh, for Apple in this case. So we are trying to really optimize the efficiency that the user has from, you know, having n like um, no data on their screen to optimizing for what they want to see. We are trying to minimize whatever that gap is. I now want to explain you the grouping mechanism. So as you can see from these widgets, so this one doesn't have anything on top because they don't have any grouping mechanism because they are not really associated with the ticker. But there are some widgets, most of them in fact, that are associated with tickers. So let's start by this one, company news. You'll see that is associated with a ticker and you can see that it belongs to group one. And so does price target by analyst and so does analyst estimates and so does valuation multiples. That means that they are interconnected and a change of ticker in one of them will uh, affect all the others the same way. On top of that, in order to make research faster, we allow the user to visualize what uh, groups have which tickers. So uh, right from the sidebar. So you can see here from this uh, sidebar, which is the, the dashboard we are in, analyst template, you've got the Microsoft uh, grouping. And so let's say that I want the um, actually the analyst estimates to be in a different group, okay? 
So now you will see that we have a Microsoft and a Microsoft right here, which is as expected. However, this analyst estimates belongs to group two. And that means that if I'm going to change this ticker here to, let's say, NVIDIA, what's going to happen is that these three uh, widgets were updated, but this one wasn't. And so right now you'll see here NVIDIA and Microsoft, but this one has not been updated because it's part of a group on its own. And so this is really nice because it allows you to compare uh, um, uh, widgets side by side and be on the, able to visualize on the same dashboard multiple uh, grouping. And now a special widget is the widget called watch list. And why is it special? Because, because it contains this list of tickers. Um, we allow that the, when the user clicks on uh, uh, one of these uh, rows, the, uh, and it is connected with the grouping mechanism, it will influence all the others just by clicking on the row. So instead of having to look for it on the top, you can just click on, on it directly. Or you can even, if you want to add it here, uh, so let's add Google here, um, you can click here, and you, you will see that uh, the Google appears, and now if I click on Google, you'll see that uh, uh, all of them get changed, except the Microsoft, which is what we were expecting. Let's talk about templates. So we've got the dashboards, which are basically a collection of widgets. So what are templates? Templates are predefined dashboards, basically, in the essence. So that means that someone has uh, uh, gone and done already a layout of how, how widgets should be configured and saved it as that layout as a template. So let's say I go into this tab and I click on templates. So one of the most common templates that we've got is the analyst template. So this, uh, this one was created by OpenBB and you can see the watch list, you can see company news, uh, you can see price target by analyst, but in the future, you'll be able to change the template and save your own templates. Now let's say I want to create, uh, actually I can go here and I want to go into a new template and I want this to be equity template. And so right now you'll see that this template is completely different, right? And so you've got overview, you've got financials. And so this is a more mature, uh, if you will, template um, that basically does a, a good due diligence on a ticker. And you'll see that if I change this ticker, so you can see here is Apple. If I change it to NVIDIA, all of the data gets updated everywhere, including here and including here. And so this is what the template does for you. It, it brings all of that into one place. And now let's say that I want to remove this and I want to remove this and I want to remove this. It still works. But now if, I, if I'm going to load a new dashboard and I load that same template, um, those are still gonna appear there because you change the, the temp. As soon as the template gets open, it becomes a dashboard. Right, and so this here, for instance, is a new template. But if you go into the the old one, you'll see that you deleted the data that was here before, because now this became a dashboard. Right. One other trick that is uh, uh, allows you to uh, do investment research much faster is we don't want you to be uh, having to select a template all the time. So we will allow you to for to select templates by default associated with your ticker of interest. So let's say that I'm looking for data on Palantir. Uh, I go into securities. If I click on it, by default, it will open the equity template on Palantir, which is the ticker I'm interested in. And, and that allows you to make investment research much faster because basically you step, you, you jump one step of having to load the template and then load the ticker. I does it all in one go. Let's say that I'm doing uh, research on Apple and I really like what I'm seeing, okay? And I like it so much that I created the text widget to add my analysis because my boss has asked me about it. Um, so I can say, I believe this is a good uh, investment opportunity. And you can add bullet points, uh, uh, reason one, reason two, two, reason three, okay? And now you really want to share this with your uh, manager. And so we allow you to do this in a very streamlined fashion and by as being as simple as to export the report. So you can click here, export report, and you can select uh, what format do you want. In this case, let's do PDF. 
and you see that the file is being downloaded shortly. But let's say that you actually don't want to have this dark theme because this may be hard to read on the, if you want to print it, for instance. One thing that you can do is uh, uh, do a shortcut where you can change the, the mode. Um, you can also come here and, and select a lighter mode for the note. And then instead of doing the ex export report here as we did, you can also do it here from the left side. Um, so export report and I also want it, or this time let's do a PNG. So you can export it as a PNG. And now if I come here, uh, you'll see that uh, 25 seconds ago, here is the full report and you can just uh, uh, send it uh, using email or anything else that you like. And here's the PNG version downloaded. Once you start to work with your team on the, the dashboards that you are using in Terminal Pro, it can become overwhelming the amount of dashboards on the on the sidebar, right? In this case, I already have eight, so it can be a bit confusing. And some of these dashboards you will use um, more consistently uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, and others you may use it once a month or even once a quarter. So we allow you to create folders. So if you come into this section, you can create a new folder, and I'm going to call this folder a quarterly analysis. I save that, that folder, I, I want to move it up in this case, and then what you can do is basically just drag and drop the, the, uh, the dashboards that you are interested on in moving, or you can even use the move to here, which will uh, put them on the, the quarter analysis. And now once you click here, you'll see that these get opened from the inside. Um, so this is a very convenient way to organize a bit better your dashboards. By now, you may have noticed that when you click on uh, the search for tickers, it opens this uh, uh, search uh, window. And this search window is uh, uh, everywhere, right? So it's not just here. So if you go here on the bottom and you click add widgets, you will have the same. If you go here on top on this advanced search, you'll have the same. If you do common K, you'll have the same. And so this is what we use to do things, uh, uh, to search for things on the OpenBB Terminal Pro. And so there's like, four categories, uh, actually five categories that I would like to uh, talk about. Um, the first of all is all, which contains all of the other four. And basically you can write uh, something that you are looking for and it will show you the options regardless of the category. Um, you've got securities, so you can look for tickers directly here. And when you click on one, this will use the template dashboard that you have selected to, to be run with. Here you've got the templates. So these are basic, the templates is the, uh, the lo loaded like layout of a dashboard. Um, and then you have widgets, which is the, 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 the widgets is the, um, the instances that all the data that uh, uh, you are able to see. And here uh, they are organized. So you can click on financials and just see the financials. Uh, if you bring your own, you can find them here. And then you've got actions. So actions includes things like uh, that are on the settings or um, export the report, co-pilot, uh, even rerun, rerun the onboarding. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it. I want to share with you something that we've been working recently. With all the AI uh, interest, uh, we found that now that the Terminal Pro infrastructure was getting really robust, uh, we could use of a better interface so that the user wouldn't have to go into the advanced search and look for the widgets of interest or even changing settings. They could just use natural language to doing so. So I want to introduce OpenBB Copilot. This is still early days, but the progress that we've seen and um, and the experience is really, really a boost in productivity. So I have this dashboard. Let's say that I want to add, um, let's say, add earnings history widget. So instead of looking for it, I can just say add earnings history, and then here, here I go. I have the earnings uh, history right here. But now let's say that I don't want to just add widgets to this uh, uh, page because that's the that's the good part of the copilot is that it doesn't work on a dashboard per base. It works through the entire like software. So right now I don't want to add it here. I want to uh, load, uh, let's say this Disney equity template. And so this one should take a bit longer, 
And here we go. Now we are uh, within the, a new equity template and you can see that the Disney ticker is loaded. And you can see how fast it was. It was just four, four words, which is, which is crazy, right? Um, and another one that uh, might be interesting to show that you can even uh, update the settings using natural language is change, uh, change team to light mode. Ta-da! That's it. That's all, all, all it took. And so this is still early days, but we really think that there's a big opportunity in these integrated uh, copilots right on your research um, to talk with the data, to even talk with all the data that is present in the dashboards so that you can make analysis of how, for instance, um, uh, the financial statement of uh, uh, Apple compares with uh, uh, Amazon. And uh, because you've got access to that same data on the same dashboard, Copilot knows about it. And so we can just uh, retrieve the data. So the opportunity is huge uh, with Copilot.